Foreign experts take on the ongoing tension in Northeast Asia that began with China's move to expand its air defense zone. We're joined by Dr. Chung Kiung, senior research fellow at the Center for International Area Studies of Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. Welcome. Good to be here. Now tell us uh, what's the significance of these air defense zones, and is it worth all the current commotion? Yes, an airspace of states is composed of three sectors. Air defense identification, territorial air, and f uh, flight information reason. And Korea's air defense identification zone was set up by the United States in 1951 with the military purposes, but it does not include some part of the Korean territory. And Japan's air identification zone was set up in 1969, but it includes some parts of Korea's territory. And this time, China <laughs> declared its own air defense identification zone. And it includes Korea's some territory and also overlaps with Japan's air defense identification zone. So this become the hot issue among three countries. Has China's more aggressive stances recently actually backfired and given the U.S. more justification in its pivot to Asia? Yes, when it comes to the U.S. pivot to Asia policy, well, uh, surely China's well action influence a lot uh, upon the U.S. decision to strengthen the pivot Asia policy. And, uh, well, we witnessed this, we witnessed it, we witnessed a series of, well, military drills taking place for the last few days, and this can be interpreted as a typical example of security dilemma. Taking an action with the intention of strengthening its own security will dampen its own security. So this kind of dilemma well, can be taken as the serious example of the ongoing situation of Northeast Asia. Then what's your outlook of the possibility of the current tension between and among the parties uh, turning into a, a military clash? I hope that the kind of thing won't, won't happen, but uh, well, there's a possible, uh, well, so Korea should, well, ignore uh, the China's air defense identification zone as, well, it unilaterally declared its air defense identification without the prior consultation with Korea. In the field of international negotiation studies, it is recommended to take avoiding strategy when facing an unreasonable request from the counterpart. So we can declare our own newly established air defense zone unilaterally and negotiation can take place after that. Well, speaking of announcing our own air defense zone, will that stir the pot more in the region as well in terms of military tensions? Well, I don't think China will depend, well, respond directly to the, to the Korea's newly established air defense zone as they had no prior consultation with Korea. But there is a possibility of some kind of minor military conflict among stakeholders. But as I told you, I hope that that kind of thing won't happen. Hmm. So to what extent should the Korean air defense zone be expanded? When it comes to duly established Korea's air defense zone, one thing clear is that it should include all the Korea's territory. And uh, well, lining with FIL can be a good alternative, I think. So can we expect these tensions in the region to continue and how should the Korean government respond? Well, I suggest that the Northeast Asian countries should launch a kind of security dialogue or strategic dialogue regime. So, well, as President Park already proposed the Northeast Asian trust building process, but it hasn't worked quite successfully so far. But sometimes crisis can be the moment when the negotiation and cooperation can start. So this can be a good point of resuming the process. Do you think that the South Korean government should do more? Well, uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Exactly. Korean government can uh, initiate the role of, well, not mediator. Sometimes Korean government can take the role of arbiter because we are the middle countries. This can draw a uh, kind of agreement from other stakeholders. So, well, this can be the start of well, strategic dialogue among Northeast Asian countries. Well, Dr. Chung, thank you so much for your insights tonight and joining us here. Thank you for having me.